Good Sunday evening to you. Why's that preacher got a vol shirt on? Well, because this is a special Sunday that we've had for many years here at Cleveland Community Chapel. In August, we have casual month when I don't wear a tie, I just dress casually. And the last Sunday of August is always our NCAA Wear Your Favorite Color shirt. So I've got my ball shirt on. Looking forward to the Tennessee game coming up next Saturday. Kick off at noon against Virginia in Nashville. Go Vols. So here we are. We're finishing up Jonah. Chapter 4. I think I'm going to move to Joel next week. We'll do the little minor prophet book of Joel. Then maybe get back into one of the historical books like Samuel after we finish Joel. Chapter 4 of Jonah. We're finishing up here. So uh, Jonah has, uh, <laughs> through the roundabout way, the school of hard knocks, got to where God wanted him to go to start with. I pointed out last week it would always be easier just to do what God wants you to do the first place, and he would have avoided the, the whale and the storm and thrown overboard the ship and everything else because he ended up in the same place. So he's done what God told him to do reluctantly. He went through the, the city of Nineveh, three days' journey, 120,000 people in town, and he walked through and he preached uh, everywhere he could, told them that God's going to destroy this place in 40 days. And the king got a hold of it, and the king declared, said, hey, we're all going to repent. Let's all fast and pray and dress in sackcloth and ashes, and, and maybe God will be merciful to us. And when people do that, when they repent and they turn to God, we're in the Christian side of the, the story now. When you, you turn to God, you turn to him through Christ, who paid for your sins. God will always be merciful to you. So Jonah had gone and preached. He said, his message that we read in the Bible, yet 40 days and will Nineveh be overthrown. And nowhere when I read Jonah's preaching did I hear him say, uh, unless you repent. He just said, this is going to happen. And it didn't happen. I've always thought, so now Jonah's kind of thinking, I'm a false prophet because it didn't happen. But really, he knew it wasn't going to happen because he knew the nature of God. And he knew that these people, if they repented, God would be merciful. But God didn't tell him that story, but he knew the nature of God. And the people did repent, and the judgment was stayed. So chapter 4, verse 1 starts out with, uh, you think a prophet of God be happy and praising the Lord that all these people are saved from the judgment. Instead, it says, it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry because he didn't like Ninevites, and, and he wanted them to, uh, to be judged by God and destroyed. But now they're on God's side. And uh, it's like the book so far, uh, it began with, jo with God saying, I've got a problem with these Ninevites down here, so if they don't get right, I'm going to destroy them. But now the book turned out to be, well, God can handle the Ninevites. His real problem was his man, Jonah here. So it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed to the Lord. And he said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country, when I was before I got on the boat, Lord, I told you so. He said, We've talked about this, Lord. I told you them people were they liable to repent. <laughs> Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish the other way, for I knew. Jonah's, now Jonah's, Jonah and his anger is going to say something here that uh, it tells us about the nature of God and that Jonah knew God. He said, because uh, I know how you are, God. He said, I was afraid they'd repent. And if they did, because uh, I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness and repentance thee of this evil that you'd turn from the judgment if they repented. Jonah knew all that. And that's why he didn't want to go. He, he didn't want to give them the message because he wanted to be judged. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, Jonah's praying, right? Kill me, God. Take my life from me, for it's better for me to die than to live. I just can't live knowing that you've been merciful to all them old Ninevites over there. I see people like this my whole life after every presidential election. There's people like, I just, just want to kill myself because their man didn't win. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, 
I don't think he's going to do anything that'd be worse than that. <laughs> but that's the way people are. They can't stand that somebody else won. And, and Jonah's kind of like this. I didn't like them Ninevites, and they've won. <laughs> I want them to be judged. <laughs> so just kill me, God. It's better for me to die than to live. And the Lord, as Jesus often did with people, ask a question to make people use that brain that he gave us. Dost thou well to be angry? Jonah, are you, are you doing the right thing to be angry like this? So Jonah went out of the city, and he sat on the east side of the city. And there he made him a booth, a lean-to, or some kind of shelter. And, and he sat under it in the shade or the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. Now, he already knows they've repented, but he still <laughs> I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to watch, and, and I'm, I'm going to hope for the worst. I hope you'll change your mind and go ahead and destroy him anyway, God. Now, what kind of God would that be if we repented and turned from our sin and turned to God if he said, I'm going to destroy you anyway? But that was Jonah for you. He was mad. So God's got to teach Jonah a lesson now. And that's what the rest of the book is, these next five verses here. Verse 6, so... He's sitting there under his little lean-to, and the Lord God prepared a gourd. If you're from the south, you know about gourds. Uh, uh, used to, people will cut that hollow gourd open and make a gourd dipper, or they'd cut the top off of it, and it's hollow inside, and they'd store their salt in it and carry their salt around. But the point for Jonah is it wasn't the gourd, it was the plant itself. It just blossomed up in the night and made him a nice shade on a hot day here. So God prepared a gourd, and he made it come up over Jonah, that it might be a shade or shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. The only comfort of Jonah's God is at least I'm sitting in the shade now. So Gina, Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. But God prepared a worm <laughs> when the morning rose the next day. And a little cut worm got into it at the base or something, just killed it and caused it to weather up in the heat and it smote the gourd that it weathered. And it came to pass in verse 8, when the sun did arise, that God prepared a vehement end. If you notice in three verses there, God prepared a, God, uh, God prepared a gourd, God prepared a, a worm, and now God prepared a wind. God's in the details here, right? He's trying to teach Jonah. He's, all this stuff is in, God's putting something together for Jonah. So uh, <clears throat> God prepared a vehement east wind, a hot wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted, and he wished in himself to die. He said, it's better for me to die than to live. And so God's having to deal with a suicidal prophet, who really you think he ought to be happy. I mean, he's just a, preached maybe the greatest revival that's ever happened. He went through a city of 120,000 people and preached, and everybody got right with God. And he don't like it because he didn't like them. It's better for me to die than to live. Verse 9, and God said to Jonah, again, doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? Now, he's getting mad about everything. He's mad about the Ninevites re repenting. He's mad about the gourd dying. Doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And Jonah said, I do well to be angry even unto death. <laughs> mad enough to die. Then the Lord said, you had pity on the gourd. Kind of ironic, isn't it? You didn't have pity. You was ready for 120,000 people to die. That didn't bother you. But when your gourd died, you had pity on that gourd. You was mad about that. For that which you had not labored, neither made it grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. And then God ends the book of Jonah with a question for Jonah, which is a question for us all. God says, and should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than 120,000 people, six score thousand persons that, that, that cannot discern between the right and their left hand. And also much cattle. God was concerned about the animals there too. God was happy that the people repented and turned from sin and turned to God. Jonah was mad and that's the problem. And that's the way the book ends. And we don't know how it turned out for Jonah, but we can just hope that Jonah thought about it a little while and calmed down and says, you know, God, you're right. I was making a fool out of myself. And we'll pick up next week in, in Joel. Thanks for joining us for Jonah.